Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome to another video here where um, it's been a good two weeks since the last upload, but I'm here and we got player comparisons for the top picks in the 2021 NFL draft. And yes, there's going to be a boatload of NFL draft content coming up. It, it, it's three weeks, less than three weeks until the actual draft. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be draft stuff. Uh, there'll be a mock draft coming out eventually. <laughs> um, I also do have some. Uh, some other videos to react to from uh, Bengal, if um, rings a bell. If not, it's uh, wide receiver rankings. It's um, something. There's something else that's a shorter, 15, 20 minute video. But the wide receiver rank ones are about four. Is about a 40 minute video already. So if you do want to see me react to that one, um, yeah, leave a like button. Uh, leave a like button. Hit the like button or a comment or something saying you want to see that. And I'll do it, but um, it, it's it's a longer video already. So um, but yeah, today we got the player comparisons for top picks in the 2021 NFL draft by a microphone. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get right into this. With the NFL draft officially three weeks away, I figured it would be really fun to actually make some player comparisons for each and every one of the top prospects in this year's NFL draft. Now, before we get to all of that, make sure you subscribe and turn on our notifications for this channel because lately the NFL has decided to hit us with some copyright claims. Also on him. Yes, that's it's right. It's and it's honestly, it's I'm not going to be asking you guys for financial support, nor do I want your money. But if you happen to support me with my channel membership program, I will shout you out like my man Owen Gaming 100, who joined as a Mike Mafia a soldier yesterday but what really matters to me more is that you guys are subscribed and have my notifications on just so you could see the content. Now that we get all that out of the way. Break. Mike check one two one two. What's going on, everybody? We're gonna start with a couple of wide receivers, beginning with one of Alabama's best wide receivers, Jalen Waddle. Now, just a few asterisks before we get to Jalen Waddle and eventually Devontae Smith. Bear in mind that this Alabama offense is absolutely unfair. There's yeah. so many free plays for wide receivers that players like Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, and even their quarterback, Mac Jones, is nearly impossible to fully evaluate. Waddle spent most of his time yeah. in the slot in Alabama and is known for one thing, and that is his speed. There's been multiple times where Jalen Waddle would just do a simple dig route into space I mean, and that Mac Jones would hit him for a short gain. Next thing you know, he takes it 95 yards all the way to the end zone for a touchdown. And the entire time he was in Alabama, he was mainly used in space. So as a result of it, he doesn't really have the most diverse route tree, which is why I really like this comparison to a Minnesota Vikings Stefan Diggs. I, I like that Bear one. in mind, I, I said I Minnesota like Vikings Stefan Diggs and not the Buffalo Bills version of Stefan Diggs. Because in Minnesota, Diggs was primarily used in a lot of flats, slants, screens, comebacks, curls, outs, and believe it or not, not that very many digs. He was an ideal short to intermediate range target, primarily because Kirk Cousins wasn't necessarily known for his ability to throw throw very deep balls. And I expect Jalen Waddle to thrive in the exact same type of environment. I do like now, that. bear I like in mind, once again, it's very difficult to evaluate Jalen Waddle because on top of every single thing that we've talked about so far, in addition to the fact that Waddle is in a absolute Lamborghini of an offense known as the Alabama Crimson Tide offense, he only had 141 targets throughout his entire career in Alabama. <laughs> For comparison, Devontae Smith had 145 targets this last year, year yeah. in his Heisman season and of its own. But for what I saw so far, I like the comparison to Stephon Diggs here. Yeah, Speaking no, that, of that Alabama wide right. receivers, we might as well discuss Devontae Smith. Now, Devontae Smith's number one knock on him is his frame. Is he is I probably he one is. of the that's, skinniest wide receivers that... That's that's his uh, number one knock, is the fact that a six-foot high schooler is... Than that are a potential first round pick that has ever entered the NFL draft in recent memory. However, he is the 2021 Heisman Trophy winner 
and he is a national champion. And for a guy that is as small as Devontae Smith, there's a lot of things that he uses to make up for it. For one, he doesn't shy away from contact, which at least during his time in Alabama, that worked to his advantage, but I don't really necessarily know how that's gonna help him at the next level. Yeah, but the thing that really catches my eye about Devontae too. Smith is the way he paces himself while he does his route running. His pacing and ability to get open reminds me very much of former Alabama wide receiver Calvin Ridley. Like Calvin Ridley, okay. Devontae Smith runs crisp routes that look absolutely effortless when he's running them. He has a similar frame to Calvin Ridley, although he weighs significantly less. And just like Calvin Ridley, Devontae Smith doesn't do a lot of talking. He just simply lets his game speak for himself. Makes, but just like Jalen Waddle, I'm going to add this once again. And the Alabama Crimson Tide offense was scary. There were a lot of times that Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle would get open as a result of being one-on-one -on -one with opposing safeties. That is a guaranteed home run more often than you think. Now that we got those two wide receivers out of the way, let's talk about this year's potential top wide receiver in the NFL draft, and that is Jamar Chase. I think for, I'll touch on those two Alabama ones. I think that those make sense. Um, I really like the Waddle Diggs one. That I really do like that one. Um, I'm a little less certain about the um, uh, like the um, the Ridley um, the uh, the Ridley uh, gosh dang it, Ridley Ridley Smith one. A little less, but even still, that also makes sense. And yes, it is very hard to like try, analyze these players. It is very difficult. That's why Mac Jones goes all over the board specifically. Finally, we get to Jamar Chase, who is the number one wide receiver in this year's NFL draft, at least whenever we are evaluating him. Jamar Chase is notorious for his ability to come down with 50-50 balls and just being a wide target that can extend a quarterback's catch radius and his own catch window. But what people don't like to talk about as much, and maybe this is because Jamar Chase took a year off, is that Chase is a remarkable lateral athlete as well. He does doesn't have remarkable agility, but he still ran a 4.3840 yard dash at his pro day. So when he hits open space, he can turn on the Jets and can easily create a home run play into the end zone. For that reason, I'm comparing Jamar Chase to a prime Des Bryant or a prime Pittsburgh Steelers Antonio Brown. A prime Des okay. Bryant was notorious for his ability to be extremely physical and his ability to come down with 50-50 balls despite only being six feet. Like Des Bryant, Jamar Chase is a remarkable athletic specimen that can hit the home run play if you get him wide open into space. And both Jamar Chase and Des Bryant would do this move where they would shield away their defenders and then eventually jump for a 50-50 ball and come down with it. So I think this is a perfect comparison for him. Now we get to a few quarterbacks. I think I, I love that. Like if you combine a prime Des and a prime AB, that's like this ceiling for Jamar Chase. Like Des Bryant's... Um, 50-50, 50-50 balls are, he came down with more than he didn't. And just everything else from Antonio Brown. Yeah, I think that I, just the control of his body just is absolutely amazing. And honestly, the number one pick in this year's NFL draft is probably the toughest person to compare to any other player whatsoever. And the main reason for that is that Trevor Lawrence's game, for the most part, is a unicorn. It's kind of like me asking you to compare Patrick Mahomes to any player that you've ever seen in NFL history. It's very difficult to do so. He doesn't compare to a player precisely. So I'm gonna do my best in making this comparison and giving you my rationale for it. Trevor Lawrence has a remarkable arm that can make any throw that you would want him to make at the NFL level. See, I can currently think of two that are um that are close comparisons not perfect but close 
Despite for some lapses here and there during his collegiate career at Clemson, he has been extremely accurate in his throws. Probably the most terrifying thing about Trevor Lawrence is on top of his uncanny ability to make absolutely any throw that you would want him to make at the NFL level, Trevor also can make plays with his feet if you need him to do so. He can make throws into tight windows, he has remarkable deep ball accuracy, he's extremely deadly as a pocket passer whenever you give him time and he doesn't panic whenever the first read is covered. He steps into his throws, he throws an extremely catchable ball and probably the scariest part of all of this is he has a lightning quick release. So when all is said and done, who do I compare Trevor Lawrence to? I compare him to this year's version of Josh Allen, right. a developed Josh Allen that has the ability to make those lightning quick throws, to throw into those tight windows, and to make those deep throws as well. Now, bear in mind, I'm not talking about the Wyoming product that was drafted in his rookie year. I'm talking about the complete version of Josh Allen that we saw this yeah. year. Like Josh Allen, Trevor Lawrence is a very tall player, although significantly taller than Josh Allen because Trevor Lawrence is six foot six. They both have lightning quick releases and they have remarkable arm strength. I'd like to say that Lawrence has more upside, but he enters the NFL as a more complete player than Josh Allen did. And this isn't a knock at Josh Allen or Trevor Lawrence. This is extreme praise for both of these players. Now let's discuss what many... I think like, yeah, that absolutely makes a lot of sense. Like when you combine just about everything like size, play style, uh, just pure play style, like you mentioned, like the ability to just the perfect passes and the ability to use the legs when needed uh, reminds me of luck. The size doesn't, um, but potential, um, the ability to make the throws um, that need to be made, the ability to extend plays with feet remind me a lot of luck and um, a bit more with the size of Elway. I, I don't think Elway was, as, I could be completely wrong because I was, I have never seen an Elway game, but my memory of John Elway from whatever there is of it is he wasn't always the most accurate of passing. Uh, he didn't have the most accurate passes, but outside of that is actually very similar to Lawrence, I believe. I could also be way off on that, but those are, uh, Luck and uh, Elway were the two that were um, that came to mind for me for Lawrence. Scouts are calling the best overall player in this year's NFL draft, and that's Kyle Pitts. Now, when you okay. look at Kyle Pitts, the number one thing he has going for him is he's listed as a tight end. He's six foot six, but he moves as though he is a wide receiver, which makes him an absolutely right versatile now, player in any offense, whether you're the Miami Dolphins and are thinking of potentially running a two tight end set, or if you are the Atlanta Falcons and want to give Matt Ryan an additional weapon. Kyle Pitts probably compares best to Darren Waller, a player that has finally yeah. been able to find his niche in the NFL. Like Darren Waller, Kyle Pitts is an absolute matchup nightmare versus opposing defenses and is too physical for a cornerback to cover him, but at the same like I think I think that works. Um I just I I personally can't think of same time else. would absolutely that abuse any linebacker that is matched up to yeah, him. Now we're going to finish off this video by listing can't. each and every other quarterback prospect that I believe is going to be a first round pick, starting with Justin Fields. Now, Justin Fields' number one knock isn't his accuracy, isn't his speed, isn't even his throwing power. Rather, it's his ability to process defenses and go through his progressions. You know, there's another player that had that exact same criticism coming out of Clemson, Deshaun Watson. As a matter of fact, take a look at these weaknesses Honestly, from Deshaun Watson's draft one. profile. He can be inaccurate, has poor ball placement, has trouble with ball security and throws too many interceptions, has bad field vision, and has trouble working through his progressions. Both of these players are extremely agile. Both of these players have all the physical tools that you would want in an NFL prospect with one flaw. The only thing that separates these two is as a result of Ohio State University never being able to create 
good NFL draft prospects. There's this stigma against Justin Fields just because he came out of Ohio State, but I personally don't buy into that. I think if this was last year's NFL draft, you're looking at a player that could potentially compete with Joe Burrow for the number one overall pick and is definitely better than the player that was selected at number five overall in Tua Tonga Viola. I think he could easily be taught how to read through his progressions at the NFL level, but I believe this comparison to Deshaun Watson is absolutely flawless for Justin yeah, Fields. Up next, we have Zach Wilson, very, very who I'm going to compare to, and oh my goodness, please don't kill me because I'm going to justify this very well, Patrick yeah, Mahomes. Yep. And here is why. I'm not saying that he's going to be as good as Patrick Mahomes. I'm saying he is a very similar prospect to Patrick Mahomes. Just like Patrick Mahomes, he came from a school that we really didn't pay attention to throughout the regular NCAA season. Patrick Mahomes out of Texas Tech, Zach Wilson out of BYU. Both of them are known for their absolute powerful right arms, their ability to make NFL caliber throws, their ability to throw into tight windows, great deep ball accuracy, and ability to throw the deep ball. Both have an ability to improvise and both are extremely raw prospects, at least when Patrick Mahomes was entering the NFL draft he was, but are good, confident competitors that can end up being probably one of the greatest players we've ever seen in NFL history if they're developed properly. Now, bear in mind, I said if. The only thing that Patrick Mahomes had on Zach Wilson coming out of Texas Tech is the fact that he had a significantly larger sample size. Zach Wilson is a bit of a one-year wonder, whereas Patrick Mahomes had a couple of years of tape for us to analyze him from when he was in Texas Tech. Up next, we have... So I think for, um, for Wilson, I think, yeah, like if his play style is very similar to Mahomes and I, I it's going to that state uh, that statement is going to be said more and more like throughout the years that this player plays so much like Mahomes just cuz that's that's how it's cuz that's how quarterbacks are going to want to play the, the big arms but yeah I think the problem is the main problem I have with Wilson is it's it's the one year wonder thing like I wasn't fully so sold on Joe Burrow last year but of course there's no documentation to prove that so I can say that I was fully sold on Joe Burrow but um yeah I think with Wilson it's the Jets it's not the right place it's just it's not I mean the because Wilson just I think needs a lot of development Still, if he wants to be an NFL quality quarterback, I think he could also go ahead and prove me wrong. But I, I think he, some like a veteran quarterback's gonna need to be there. I, I really could just be about it, any any veteran quarterback would work. But um, yeah, I think Zach Wilson. Like I'm not a huge fan of Zach Wilson to the Jets. But um, that that I'll. That's for another video. Lance. And bear in mind, guys, we have draft profiles done for Devontae Smith, Trey Lance, Zach Wilson, Trevor Lawrence, and Justin Fields. If you guys want to take a look at that, I'm going to leave them all in the description. I do really like Mike's um, music. I, I, like, I like the music from the background, but I'm not talented enough to do that description down below but Trey Lance is another very easy player to draw a comparison for and that is Colin Kaepernick the NFL prospect okay. Colin Kaepernick at least throughout his entire NFL career was never known for his ability to be an accurate passer however he was known for being extremely athletic and having a very physical frame and so far that's what Trey Lance has going for him now of course Trey Lance is seen as the most raw prospect prospect in this entire NFL draft and if he could work on his accuracy he could potentially be the best player in this entire NFL draft but for now in terms of what he brings in terms of his physical tools and raw skill set he reminds me a lot of Colin Kaepernick and finally we get to Matt I do think yeah as a prospect he matches up very well with Colin Kaepernick out of, uh, when he's coming out of Nevada I do think if everything does go right with Trey Lance um expect a little bit of um the same similar play style to uh, MVP uh, Cam Newton. 
Titans. And I'm going to be honest, this is probably going to be the hardest player for me to compare anyone to. And for me, Mac Jones reminds me a lot of Nick Foles. And that's because I believe in the right situation. Mac Jones can succeed. But that's the comparison everybody wants to. Everybody's achieving for it. I don't think he can elevate other teams. I think if you put good pieces around him and give him the keys, he could be the guy you have under center that can lead you to the promised land. But the thing is, in Alabama, he had remarkable talent all around him. He had a world-class offensive line, world-class wide receivers, halfback, tight end, and head coach. So it's really hard to grade Mac Jones as a prospect. People love the fact that he could go through his progression so easily and Nick Foles is notorious for his ability to pick up the RPO offense very quickly being so proficient in it that he was able to lead the Philadelphia Eagles to a Super Bowl against the New England Patriots but when Nick Foles left the Philadelphia Eagles and that remarkable supporting cast and went to the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Chicago Bears yeah. his career began to fizzle out so just like Nick Foles I think if Mac Jones is placed in the right situation he's going to be be very successful in the NFL and those are my player comparisons guys I apologize well, I think I think I think a little higher a um, little bit more highly of Mac Jones than um he does I do think I I the play style yeah it's similar to Nick just the progressions um it will be interesting to see uh how Mac will do without these star wide receivers if because uh, even the 49ers, they, a very good offensive system, but not the same talent, like comparative talent that um, Alabama had at wide receiver, at the wide receiver positions. A very good offensive line and uh, offensive coach. But um, yeah, I think Mac, if he could also, I think Carolina is not right. Um, New England also could work. I think it's better than Carolina, but. Um, Honestly, a team like Indianapolis or Chicago is a perfect fit for him. Maybe even Washington could have, could work out. The hit. Uh, could work out very well for Mac Jones. But um, yeah, that'll do it for me. If y'all enjoyed, please leave a like. And uh, sorry for that little interruption right there. See y'all later. Adios.